But the other thing I needed to uh, discuss with you are the McLaurin series. And the good news on the McLaurin series is the McLaurin series are Taylor series, but they're centered at zero. M-A-C-L-A-U-R-I-N series, McLaurin. So the McLaurin series is a special case Taylor series with n equals uh, a equals zero. So what does that mean for my formula? Well, that would mean f of x, whatever my uh, function is I'm trying to write the power series for is the sum n equals 0 to infinity. Remember the Taylor series, it's the nth derivative at a over n factorial x minus a to the n. But what we're saying is a is, a is 0. So I need to find the nth derivative at 0 formula. Divide that by n factorial. <coughs> and then x minus 0. Hey, that's just x to the n, isn't it? Since a is 0, that last part is just x to the n. So <coughs> when they want Maclaurin series, this is, uh, this is what you go with. All right, so let's find a couple of those. Find the Maclaurin series 4. f of x equals e to the x. The only thing about the Maclaurin series is it doesn't tell you the center because the center is automatically zero. Just have to remember that. <coughs> but this is what we did. Okay. <coughs> so what do I do to find it? Same thing as before. Find the nth derivative formula. All right, so just doing the first few derivatives, my f of x is e to the x. Oh, that's pretty nice, isn't it? What's the first derivative? e to the x. What's the second derivative? Okay. I'm not going to do many of those because it's always e to the x. But now I need to compute those at 0, x equals 0. So that would be f of 0. It's e to the 0. f prime of 0 is e to the 0. One, one, one. Ooh, this one works out really nicely, doesn't it? What's the nth derivative at zero? Uno. Yep. This one turns out really nicely. E to the x, the nth derivative at zero is just one. They're all derivatives are all one at zero for this one. Okay, <clears throat> so we're going to plug that into our uh, Maclaurin series formula here. See what happens. Oops my problem. <clears throat> so it's going to be f of x is e to the x equals the series n equals 0 to infinity. Well, the nth derivative of 0 is 1. I erased it, but we all remember what it was. n factorial x to the n. Or if you want to, just write that. n equals 0 to infinity x to the n over n factorial. Start off an easy one. Okay? No problem? So far, so good. All right. Well, let's get some... Same thing can happen on these. You know, you can get your n factorial, all that stuff. But let's <clears throat> see what else can happen. Here's another one. All right, so let's find the McLaurin series, which is the series n equals 0 to infinity, n through to 0 over n factorial x to the n. Okay, so let's find one of those, 4. Find the McLaurin series, 4.
How about we do f of x equals sine of x? Well, this one does an interesting little thing. All right, so my first derivative is cosine. Second derivative is negative sine. Third derivative is positive cosine. And the fourth derivative is forgot. Yeah, third derivative is negative sine, so the, I mean the second derivative is negative sine, so the third derivative would be negative cosine. So what's the fourth derivative? Positive sine. And if you'll notice there, what's happened? We're back to where we started up here, sine, so the pattern will continue here. All right. But <clears throat> for the McLaurin series, we need to compute at x equals 0. Compute at 0. All right, so f of 0, what's f of 0? Sine of 0? What's sine of zero? Zero. First derivative at zero. First derivative at zero would be cosine of zero, which is one. So second derivative at zero. Second derivative is negative sine of zero, which is still zero. Third derivative at zero. Third derivative of zero will be negative of cosine of zero, which is negative one. <clears throat> and then the cycle starts all over again. Won't it? Because won't the fourth derivative will be the same as the f first one? Fifth derivative will be the same as the second one? Because our pattern has just started again, right? At the fourth derivative, the fourth derivative, it's back to sine, so it'd be zero, one. All right, so that's our pattern. Well, <clears throat> so it's just going to keep rolling zero, one, zero, negative, one, zero, one. What are we going to do with that? Well, let's just uh, forego a. Uh, formula for that and let's just plug these in plug these in to our formula right here in our series so we're going to say f of x equals sine of x equals this series n equals 0 to infinity nth derivative at 0 n factorial x to the n alright <clears throat> so our pattern is I'm going to need a little space here, so <coughs> 0, 1, 0, negative 1, okay? <coughs> Where do I want to put that? So f of 0 was 0, f of f prime of 0 was 1, f double prime of 0, just so I can, 0, third derivative, zero is negative one and then it cycles from there okay so I'm gonna plug those in to this formula all right because this means like I said this is f the zero derivative which is just the function zero over zero factorial x to zero so this is just gonna write these terms out term by term f of uh, f first derivative at zero divided by this is n equals 1. Just doing n equals 1 here. n equals 0 is the first one here. Then I'm going to do n equals 2. It's n equals 2. Well, it would be the second derivative at 0 over 2 factorial. Whoops, what happened to x? x to the first should be here. This would be x squared. And then that's n equals 3. We'll have the third derivative <coughs> at 0, 3 factorial x cubed. Go one more. F to the four, uh, fourth derivative, zero, four factorial, um, x to the fourth, and then so on and so forth. 
All right, so let's plug in for these. This one would go here. 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 Zero over zero factorial x is zero. One over one factorial x to the one. Zero over two factorial x squared. Negative one over three factorial x cubed. You see what's happening? What's happening? What's zero over zero factorial times x to the zero? Zero. What's zero over two factorial times x squared? That's zero. That's zero. What's happening? What terms are left? Odd ones, you might say. The odd ones are all that's left. Yeah, because of those terms that zeroed out here, if your derivatives, whatever, those zero out, then that means your whole term right here zeroes out in your series. So what's left? Only the odd powers, odd, odd ones are left. All right, so can't we make that into, this would be 1 over 1 factorial x to the 1, negative 1 over 3 factorial x cubed. What would be the next one? What would be next? 1 over 5 factorial x to the 5th. What would be next? Negative 1, yeah, because also notice they're, they're odd, but they're alternating signs there too. Okay, so I think that gives us a pretty good little pattern. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Well, <clears throat> turns out if we want to restart uh, here, let's say we go back to n equals 0 to infinity. However, all that's left are the odd ones, the odd terms. Well, I can do that <laughs> with a little expression we like to call 2n plus 1. Okay. Let's take a look at this. No, oh, sorry. This one's easy. Negative 1 to the nth, obviously, because I'm alternating signs. So I've got negative 1 to the n. But then the bottom, oops, forgot something. Try this one on for a sec. <coughs> yeah, if I go with consecutive integers, <coughs> 2n plus 1 only hits the odd ones, doesn't it? Because at n equals 0, that's 2 times 0 plus 1, that's 1 factorial. That's x to the 0, uh, x to the 1, right? That would give me, the first term would be that, wouldn't it? At n equals 1, the second term for this, well, it would be 2 times 1 plus 1, which is 3 factorial x to the third. And then that would be negative 1 to the 1, which is negative 1. Then the third term would be n equals 2, which would be 2 times 2 plus 1, which is 5 factorial x to the 5. Positive. So this does it. So if you got some terms zeroed out, then you'll have to do uh, something, something like that to that effect. Hmm? Plus, if, they're, if they're the odd ones. What if they were the even ones? Just, just to throw out a hypothetical there. What if they were the even ones? Well, instead of 2n plus 1, how, do, how would I get even ones out of it? Just 2n. Just 2n. 2n would get the even ones. It would get n equals 0 because 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 1 would be 2. I got one more. Uh, so yeah, if, if you've got just the even ones, then, then you go with 2n. Yeah, let me do one more with you, and then uh, we'll pick up on that note next time. Is that okay, though? So that's for sine of x. Sine of x has that. <clears throat> All 
Okay, so find the Maclaurin series for f of x equals e to the x over 3. So I need to start by finding an nth derivative at zero formula. All right, so f of x is x over 3, e to the x over 3. What's the first derivative? Well, the first derivative at x would be e to the x over 3 times derivative of x over 3, 1 third. f second derivative would be, so this is 1 third e x over 3, all right, second derivative would be one third times the derivative of e to the x over three would be one third e to the x over three. So that'd make it one ninth e to the x over three. Third derivative would be one ninth times the derivative of e to the x over three, which is one third e to the x over three, which is one twenty-seventh e to the x over three. With me? Fourth derivative. Maybe we can see what happened. 1 27th times the derivative of e to the x over 3, which is 1 30 e to the x over 3, which is 1 81th. 1 over 80, 181st? Something like that. e to the x over 3. All right. But I want those at 0. So I want to do f of 0. That's e to the 0 over 3. That's 1. Right? f first derivative at zero. Is one third e to the zero over three. Well that's one third times one, that's one third. Second derivative at zero. Well being at zero, this is making this pretty nice. It's one ninth e to the zero over three, which is one ninth. What's the third derivative? Well the since I'm doing it at zero, that's going to be one, so that's one twenty seven. Third derivative. And then the fourth derivative is one eighty first. What is my pattern? I don't have the zero thing happening here. But what's the nth derivative then? Well, the e part goes out altogether, so there's no e part to this. All that's left are 1, 1 third, 1 ninth, 1 27, 1. What are the denominators here? Powers of 3, yeah. That's 3 squared. Oh, 3 to the first, that's 3 squared. That's 3 to the third, that's powers of 3. 3 to the fourth. And even this one works because that's 1 over 1, so that's 3 to the 0, isn't it? Yeah, it's 1 over 3 to the n. And not even any alternating signs. Just 1 over 3 to the n. <laughs> so what does that mean for my McLaurin series? So the McLaurin series would be, plug that in right here. So my f of x, e uh, e to the x over 3, would be equal to the series, n equals 0 to infinity, the nth derivative of 0 is 1 over 3 to the n, over n factorial, x to the n. Can I clean that up some? We could say, what? One third x to the n. Okay, I see what you're saying. Is that what you said? Okay. We could write it this way, couldn't we? How about we do this? There's different ways of writing it. Could write that way too. Take your pick, I guess. Probably one of these two, but <clears throat> or something vaguely similar to it. Um, oh, here's here's another way. For some reason, I have it written this way. Just another, just another thought. <laughs> okay, like I said, pick your pick. 
sometimes it doesn't really matter how they look, but all right.